out. Mm. Now we can start. There we now go. It's <laughs> so I'm Pamela Madsen, and that's Ron, Ron Stewart. Stewart. <laughs> and he's in Canada right now. Mm-hmm. And at home. And I we're back to the body started. Mm. And I even mm. recognize <laughs> those <laughs> gold <laughs> curtains behind him. Um, which is how we started um, with sessions way back when, almost a decade ago. Almost a decade. And um, we're still here, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> we're still here. And uh, talk about resistance. So talk about resistance and struggle and what it means to meet resistance and struggle and, um, and the gifts of that and seeing resistance through. And... Run started with, oh my God, I have such resistance um, to doing Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we're talk- tingly we're sensations talk- in my body. <laughs> having t- <laughs> no, any no. somatics, so he's having tingling, <laughs> stomach, you know, tingly feelings um, in his body, which is wonderful. <laughs> and so, so, so let's talk about that. Like, what's that resistance about, right? Yeah, well, so it's a fear of um, uh, appearing like I don't know what I'm talking about, or I might go off on a tangent that is not about the topic, or my hair might look, (laughs) last week my hair might have looked disheveled, and now it just might not look, you know, whatever. Uh Um, So there's like a, a reluctance to put myself out there and forward and sort of speak like I know what I'm talking about. Um, Which you so do. Thank you, and it's and it's really really wonderful. Um, and you, so I'm looking on my phone, so I'm trying to see if we can manage questions as we're doing this. And um, Wendy just sent you a hola, hola. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So you know, and what's true is that you know you're really one of what I know you're going to flinch. So just like breathe. <laughs> you're right, one I'm of the mas- you're, You are truly one of the masters in our field, and. So, you know, for to to allow you, <laughs> allow you, like as if I could allow you, to stay in your resistance to not being seen, mm-hmm. um, and for really cheat so many people out of the wisdom you hold in your body, mm. and so thank you for acknowledging the resistance. We don't do this very much together because you have a bit of a resistance to it. You're not like what I say to the team, who wants to do Facebook Live? You don't see Ron going, oh, 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 pick me. Pick me, pick me, I want to do that. And so this seemed like the perfect topic. Well, Um, yeah, I've been, so interestingly, when I, uh, when you invited me to do um, a Facebook Live, and of course I was going to say yes. And then it was like, okay, so how can I contribute to this conversation? I've been requested to participate. Mm-hmm. And so what, what would I, so that's another thing. What, what would I, t- what the hell would I talk about? And, <laughs> and so resistance came up because partly because, well, in the 10 years that we've been working together, we've worked with flow and resistance and all kinds of energies have shown up in um, how we function and work and it's all natural and good <clears throat> but also in my own personal life I've, I've been able to get to the other side of resistance on some things that I've been working on and I thought oh that's actually a really interesting possibility to share with people that resistance can be a natural response to like personal growth and whatnot mm-hmm. it could be mm-hmm. a natural resistance to all kinds of things um but there was a part of me that had resistance about suggesting it because it's not sexy. It's not, it's not playful. It's like, I don't want to play. I want to like hide over here. It's confronting. It's, it's confronting. <laughs> so when you flipped it on its head and said, and your invitation in the Facebook live was, can you, can you read the line back to me? Like the sure, resistance as a gift, like, as you a know, gift. As so a I gift. was like, mm-hmm. Oh, well, how is like, how is Pamela seeing resistance when I'm sort of like, going, oh my God, I'm so resistant about X, Y, Z. And so Pamela's like presenting it as a gift. And so I was kind of curious. I was like, how are you seeing that in this play? Well, what I notice, you know, it, it, you, know you can really even go back to so many philosophers. Um, Joseph Campbell, 
who I had the privilege, for those of you who don't know who Joseph Campbell is, um, he wrote um, about mythology and he was very well known. And in my freshman year and my only year <laughs> at Sarah Lawrence College before he became a Jedi with Star Wars and was their consultant, um, near the end of his life, he was a professor at Sarah Lawrence. And he, where I was in school, and he would say things like, the path you don't want to go on is, is your journey. Mm. And so if you can notice in your body the resistance that you feel, mm. it can be a, a really a physical body um, signal. Right. That that's actually where you need to go. Right. Because, you know, back to the body, we talk a lot about green, yellow, and red places. And what we mean by that is like green is like going to right. the grocery store. Easy stuff. But not today, because today you need your mask <laughs> and your gloves. But like in normal times, right. <laughs> it would just be so simple. Now going to the grocery store is more like a yellow. It's a yellow. <laughs> you know, and so a yellow place is where we have we hold some fear, trepidation, worry, it's stretching. Mm -hmm. And then red is no. Yeah. Stop, right? So resistance often lives in the yellow. And so it's that, um, that thing you want to try. It's that it, it, it often will have to do with like, it can have to do with relationship, right? Right. You know, do I leave? Do I stay? Do I leave? Right. Do I stay? Right. right. Relationship that... to work, relationship to partner, relationship to our relationship to anything. Right. Resistance to seeing ourselves naked. Mm -hmm. I mean, women, um, especially, and I know men do as well, um, have such a resistance to the mirror. And our healing is in the mirror. Uh -huh. You know, being able to embody ourselves, right? And so that's what I mean when I say resistance is a gift, is that it's often the signal of if we will confront it, mm -hmm, if we mm -hmm. will surrender to our resistance, which means to participate with. So that's a clue. So for me, when I was like, oh, a gift, that's interesting. <laughs> so, but what, what it actually requires to see it as the gift is you need to get to the other side to be able to see that behind yeah. it, holds the potential for the next unveiling, the next opening, the next possibility, yeah. and the next healing. So if I'm always holding a resistance of, around some aspect of my life, you know, sexuality or my understanding of, you know, how the universe works or something, <clears throat> if I resist moving in to exploring that, then it's, well, it's in essence keeping that aspect of my life in its current state, which uh, is probably smaller than what I might want. So my curiosity in that direction might be because, oh, if I pursued this, it could create some sort of sense of expansion. Keep going there. And it freaks me out and makes me resistant because I've been working under the parameters that I have understood and known for the last 58 years. So my nervous system has resistance because it knows what it knows. You know, my, my, my body knows what it knows and it's functioned very well, thank you very much. <laughs> and to go into a study or exploration of that area where my ego holds resistance, it, it challenges everything that my body has known and has sur survived with. And to keep, me, to keep me alive and flowing through the world. And safe. Yes. Or safe enough, right? Yes. So what we're looking at um and i don't know ron if you're able to see your phone and if there are questions coming through by turning off the sound i hadn't um, set that up but i could uh, but i don't um, want to lose focus either. don't want to lose focus yeah um I, we were there on my phone and now we've disappeared so i don't know where we are so i was trying to keep <laughs> up with people a little bit um folks if you have questions or we're not responding we will <laughs> after this is over we'll type response or stay mm. with us so here's the thing about the fear that lives inside resistance is change. Right. And so if I hear the things that we hear it back to the body, if I become a sexual Olympian, 
if I learn about my body, if I understand my body in bigger and better ways, will I leave my partner behind? Mm. So mm. I have resistance to um, becoming a, a better embodied woman because my partner won't come with me. That will me disrupt the relationship. Mm. So I'm feeling this desire, but the resistance is mm. what will happen to my relationship? Relationships, because when or we shift and right. grow in our erotic other aspects of our lives, as we know, shift and alter too. We understand right. our relationship to boundaries, our relationship to consent, our relationship to communication and uh, speaking our needs. And that flows into all aspects of our lives. So our relationship with our bosses, our relationship with our friends have the potential to change. <clears throat> but ideally, it's for the expanse of better. So we need some courage. Unless we have a resistant partner. <laughs> right. So, well, we have to have courage. We have to have courage. So when we work with our resistance, that's an opportunity mm -hmm. um, to have courage. And trust. And trust. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that we don't have fear. This is true. Um, because, you, you, you know, what's the point of courage if there is no fear? <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that's not courage, then. That's green. Mm -hmm. That's green light. Go, go, go. Right. And it, so, yeah, go ahead. And it's interesting because when we, so say we're in a relationship, you and me, and one of us wants to go and explore in this other direction. So we can be locked into this place of fear, but we can also trust that if one of us goes off in that direction, perhaps they will build the skills to bring the other along with them. So if we're both in this place of unknown and there's this golden egg over here but we don't really know the path to the golden egg. We don't know what's gonna happen on the way. We don't know what's gonna happen when we get there. <clears throat> what if the skills that we build in getting there help us to turn around and communicate with our partner and bring in um, you know, the ease, the vocabulary and the speaking to help them come along on the journey with us? But we don't know that before we started, right? Yeah, and we often have to start it with ourselves. Yes. Because to deal with our own resistance and our partner's resistance at the same time yes. may be overwhelming. Yeah, and, and, and I think what is sometimes, and I'll use a big word, a tragedy mm -hmm. is if our partner's resistance or our religious institutions, religion, you know, or our communities, Familial you community. know, uh -huh. um, resistance is what holds us back uh -huh. from meeting our resistance and meet and finding our courage and finding the change that is possible. And, you know, and this can happen in so many ways where we, we put a block of resistance down because on the other, we, we are told that we should be resistant. I mean, even in, um, all the various cultures. I mean, I, I um, have have people in um, the LGBTQ community who say mm -hmm. who um, women who identify as lesbian um, mm -hmm. who find an interest in men, but then they feel like, oh, mm, I can't, I, go down I, that can't path. I can't do that because then my 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 community will judge me for being bisexual or my community will judge me for wanting that exploration. Mm. My female partner mm. may feel threatened mm -hmm. by me working with a man in a session or um, experimenting erotically because that, then I'm no longer fit in that box. And we can do that with monogamy. We can do that with, with all kinds of, you know, being a vegan and then you eat a piece of steak and you're really wanting what's you wanting that delicious smell of bacon and you like well you you're following me yeah i totally following you and i had like i had that experience when so I, share well share well, what you want to share yeah 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 so yeah hmm um having a men's community in, in vancouver and uh offering yoga classes and whatnot and then um, having curiosity about um female bodied people and wondering how i could never make that happen 
and it, I didn't have to do anything to make that happen. It showed up and I followed it, went with the flow. There was no resistance, <clears throat> but to communicate to this community that all of a sudden I was moving. Sec you, were, you were just sexual. Move, moving, <laughs> moving location for mm -hmm. a relationship with a female body person mm -hmm. was um, uh, in a challenging email to write. And there was a lot of silence after that. And I remember running into someone like seven or eight years later who referred to it as when I came out as bisexual, which wasn't what I did. <laughs> so I guess, okay, so there I'd gone, I got, I went to the egg, I felt the response and some people came up to me and said, what you did was so amazing. And if I understood female bodied people more, I would include them in my realm of play, which right. I thought was really an awesome um, um, revelation. Cu revelation, curiosity, and because um, yeah, if I knew more about, then I right. would go and pursue. And it sort of was like, oh, so we start out at thirteen or whatever, and just kind of go down that path that we're on. And we arrive at 30 or 40 midlife when lots of us start to have questions about, so what's happening here? And, right. and I see this possibility over here. And I right. think I want a little more of that. And this has been really interesting and in serving me. So how do we create the opportunities to introduce the new ideas that help us walk down that path with ease? So we're not, um, we're not work, yeah, working through the jungle and, and having, to tear, having to tear our way through to find a path. We can have other people who have gone down that road before us to sort of introduce. introduce I, 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 and, and thank you for that share because it was vulnerable and important, I think, because also what happens is that many of us in our growing up face fear, resistance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we proclaim ourselves something, mm -hmm. right? So we, Lethal, you know, right? right, you know, we, we, we claim ourselves as, mm -hmm. you know, and then, so then we're in it, mm -hmm. right? And then as we mature and grow and explore, we go, oh, <laughs> the yellow brick road over there looks really interesting, but wait, I've I'm identified in, I, I've there. identified myself as this thing. <laughs> And now what do I do? And then needing all that resistance again and confusion. So when we hit resistance, it often will reflect if we see it as a gift and move to the other side of it, we will often, we may often confuse people who are around us. Mm -hmm. And that also becomes the fear, you know? And so we put roadblocks and obstacles yeah. in our way to justify our staying we're right. <laughs> so it, so now COVID-19 has become a really good obstacle and I'm not saying it isn't. Mm -hmm. but it's become a really good obstacle. Well, you know, I, well, what about COVID-19? And can I go right or left because of that? Um, you know, people have always used money, mm. time, mm -hmm. Um, and um, commitment mm -hmm. um, as an obstacle. That's been, I mean, I can't tell you how many women I talk to and it's like, okay, so what just, I don't even have them tell me any more of their obstacles. I just go down the list. So, okay, you've got resistance. So is it your time? And then we kind of go through each layer of the obstacle so we actually get to where the real resistance is. Right. It's usually not money. It's usually, because the money can be worked out and, and calendars can be worked out, right? Yeah. It's usually the fear uh -huh. of being seen as sexual. Right. You know, the fear of- Our desire, our want. What will, what will actually, what would actually happen if I connected to my body? Mm -hmm. What would actually happen to my life? Mm -hmm. well, you know, and if I get turned on to my body and learn that I really want more, how the hell am I 
going to get it. We right. have some great comments here. Um, um, one gal, Daniela, has said the Mormon church created a lot of pleasure resistance, mm. as well as resistance towards using sex to find the divine. For me, as a person who identifies as a woman, the fear of being kicked out of communities. And I think that's huge. Sure, absolutely. absolutely. I, I, people have fear around liking this Facebook Live. <laughs> sure. Or commenting on this Facebook Live because... Because their friends will see that they would like to con con conversation that talked about sexuality. Sex or, or something. And, or yeah, and that Pamela Madsen. No, oh, uh, yeah, and that Ron. <laughs> have you heard about that Ron? Oh, my God. God. He's, you know, it's notorious. <laughs> and so, you know, what, we tr what we're trying to do um, through these Facebook Lives and... Um, is to make invitations yes. to community specifically towards women. Right now we do work with couples, but yeah. specifically towards women. Invitations that feel safe enough and small enough to taste something that they feel resistance towards. Yes. And so maybe coming you know, we have women who just skydive, right? They yeah, just go, um, right. bam, I have never met them. They, yeah. All of a sudden, I get a notification on my website that they're coming to Vegas. You know, paid in full, thanks, send me an email, but you got my money. But those women exist. Yeah. But there are also women who have a lot of fear and a lot of resistance and a lot of the obstacles that they put in front. You know, the obstacles, again, are kind of like the Halloween costume that resistance wears. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, like- It's well, also in the realm of, you know, yes, no, and maybe. Yeah. So resistance can be like, tell me more. And then, you, and so like you said, when you actually talk with people and they find out that it's not this blanket like, no, but actually it's this fear or concern that something da 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 da. So right. I feel like if people, in this resistant place are, are able to be kind of coached or spend time with themselves to figure out what is the nugget of their resistance, whether it's the fear of shattering their relationship or they just don't understand who they would be if they got to the golden egg, <clears throat> then maybe maybe we can start to make uh, build a relationship around that fear or to understand it better so that we can uh, calm our system and go, do you know what? If I go down this path, it's not going to be all wreck and ruin. <clears throat> Again, because of the skills that we build on the way, we can uh, have the potential to navigate and communicate and stand on our own two feet. And I recognize that when it's uh, around communities and being shunned, like, wow, tough, tough decisions. Right? Really tough. I love this comment that um, Ellen Sophia just made. Mm -hmm. And she said that delayering mm -hmm. is a good process. That's such a great language. Thank you, Ellen. Delayering. Huh. And so delayering the obstacles uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, around resistance and then understanding, taking the time to understand what, what is the resistance? What is the fear underneath the resistance? Um, Sometimes a fear is, I'll be the one woman this won't work for. Right, right. You know, I hear about, you know, 98% of the women return and la, 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 la. And what if I'm the one? Right. Who that yeah. is so broken, the story of broken women, which is such bullshit. Um, but, but it's held in the body. Yeah, so in that way, it's not bullshit. So it's, it's not, it's this a is, <laughs> This is the feeling that I'm having. So right. Don't call so, that so bullshit, girl. Exactly, exactly. So don't mm -hmm. call my felt sense of my brokenness. Mm -hmm. And if I take that vulnerable me mm -hmm. um, to try a new thing, yeah, that I'll be the one that it will fail. Oh. Uh -huh. And I think women experience this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been working with loving uh, my curvaceous body for a long time. You've seen me at maybe two or three sizes um, through the decade of working with me. 
and I am currently home, and so I'm on Weight Watchers, Ron, and I have a Fitbit on my arm, and I, but I'm not getting on the scale. I have scale resistance. Mm -hmm. So what is the scale resistance? I don't want to hear that my felt sense in my body that it feels really good right now and really strong and slim in, when I use the word slim, I, it's really uh, figurative. <laughs> You know, because I'm not that woman. I'm never going to be that tall, skinny gal, but it's about my health. Yeah. I don't want to hear from the scale yes. that my felt sense that this feels really good is not working. Right. So this is where resistance actually can serve us. It can for a little like, while. If you're feeling fabulous, right. what, 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 why? Step on right. the, why step on the scale that's going to tell you something that might shift your own perception. Exactly. And so, you know, it is complicated. This is a big subject. And what I started to say before was that we're trying to create experiences for women right now. That they can have right now. Um, we're removing obstacles. Okay, we're, we've created Passport to Pleasure. That's gonna be next Thursday. Um, I think, I, I'm almost scared to say the date out loud. 25th. Um, thank you. June 25th, Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, Eastern, Eastern Standard, Standard Time. Time. Right, so 25 bucks. So there's your money obstacle. It's not a lot of money. Right. Okay, but yes, we want you to pay something because we want you to show up. We want you to have a commitment to attendance. 25 bucks for a three hour workshop. For a three hour with, my, awesome. with our entire team. Mm -hmm. With workshops and keynotes and movement and dance and sound and live demonstrations of how we do sexological body work through the glass, which has mm. become our kind of um, favorite phrase through the lens, through, through the glass. Through the screen, through Zoom, the screen, through online. Through Zoom, online. Mm -hmm. How do we do fantasy? How do we do movement? How mm -hmm. do we do, how do we work with trauma mm -hmm. virtually? So that women can have a taste of what's possible in a softer way to confront their resistance. Awesome. And yes. I was speaking with uh, one of the participants um, the other night after the somatic uh, embodiment practice that I led. And she was saying that after however many retreats she's been to, four or five, that this online program helps to keep her dialed into her body, dialed into her experiences by back to the body, dialed into the golden egg. It makes it way more um, accessible and that she's able to just kind of um, every day just move along with the exercises that we've been giving through um, Caffin's book. And so it keeps her percolating. Like you talk about the cauldron, keeping the cauldron burning. Absolutely. It's yes. helped her keep the cauldron burning on a day-to-day -day basis and has um, really sort of expressed uh, how fantastic it has been for her. And so what Ron's talking about, for those of you who don't know, is we have a new program. It's called Every Day at Back to the Body, which is a virtual online program. Um, where women meet with um, our sexological body workers like Ron with me or a female sex educator, group calls, lots of things. And Ron's been doing weekly um, movement embodiment classes privately in this private space that we have for these women. Um, and so what we're doing with Passport to Pleasure is giving you a little tiny taste of that everyday program. And I'll post it in a little bit. I can't post it while we're chatting. Pamela Jacob, if you're still there, she says, um, problem with men who judge not understanding sensuality is just the physical act and how frustrating that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I, I, I think, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Do you understand exactly what she's saying, Juan? I think We're that what enough. she was saying is that uh, uh, many men don't value the, the, the gentle, slow simmer of sex and foreplay and touch and cooing and 
cuddling and and sharing verbally vocally <clears throat> uh, oftentimes men get um, excited and aroused and it all has to move forward at that kind of tempo um, is what I'm I'm hearing from her and yes the the men's community the women's community has been going strong for a number of decades and we really see a lot of headway and the men's community has some time to catch up I, I, I mean I think it's part of the privilege when we're sitting in this privileged place it's like we've got it made what work do I need to do Right. So we just kind of sit with the status quo, which, as we can see with the Me Too movement and all the atrocities that that has unfolded, um, the, the status quo is really like, I mean, we're seeing it crumbling all around us, right? Right. We're, we're, in, in so many, in so many, in so many different, ways. in so many ways. Um, Ellen Sophia said, can you say that again? And I'm not sure where that was that mm. you wanted me, us to say it again. So mm. Ellen, um, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly where that I hope we did it and if not post it again and um, we will try to say whatever it was um, again um, and Danielle was saying fire in the belly beautiful stroking the cauldron yes and that's what we want to keep happening we really feel that somatics and keeping us in our bodies especially now I mean it's always but even more now um, is so important and it's was so challenging for us, especially as we call ourselves somatics, people who work through the body, through breath, through touch, through sound, through movement, through like getting really close to our people. Yeah. Um, to figure out, well, how do we bring that connection when we can't actually physically touch you? Yeah, we've um, yeah. I, I think all the practitioners have been really pleasantly surprised during this whole COVID experience um, as to how effective the online platform can be, and the women and participants have been talking about you know being in the safety of my own home, um, you know, uh, learning skills of self touch, and 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 it totally makes sense, right? We talk about how how can we be a better lover, and we talk about become a better lover to yourself. And so this platform where people are, are in their homes, in this safe space, um, decorated and styled and dressed as they care to be, um, they get to explore at a tempo that is right for them. So they can crack the book open today and do the homework or they can wait a few days. And so everything can be really um, moderated or modulated by the individual. And yeah, I've noticed this in a, a number of communities that I've been involved in doing online work. It's, um, it's really proving to be um, um, pleasantly effective. Yeah. And you know what I'm finding? I'm finding resistance to feeling so short next to Ron in the, in the frame. Oh. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'll be don't down fall. Here. Wait, wait, down <laughs> There's uh, our embodiment exercise. There's right. Oh, up and down. And where do you feel that in your body? So... Thank you, Juan, for, for joining me in, in delayering. Yeah, that was um, an interesting word. It sort of, when, like, when you read that out, it felt like panning for gold, and you sort of get rid of all the stones, and then what's got left is the, the nuggets, right? And from that place, you can figure out what you got. Yes. And um, Ellen responded, and she said, no worries. Just want to say, recognize that cultural messaging program lives inside of me, too. Yeah. I noticed that when I self-pleasure, the rushing and impatience and goal-orientedness, very much an inside and outside job. Absolutely. Mm. And, um, and that's where, you know, we're able to help through the lens. You know, we have Caitlin doing um, body mapping and vulva mapping. That's not going to happen at Passport to Pleasure, just so you know. That's in the program. Um, but so much of the inside job work, um, it can happen virtually and in the body. So we hope you will join us and mm. everyone else. We have 11 people um, coming together. Facilitators. facilitators, 11 incredible, talented team members of Back to the Body joining us on everything you, know, you can possibly think of to do with our somatics. And um, I'll post a link. If you're feeling resistance, <laughs> if notice it, here's the invitation. 
notice your resistance to joining us at Passport to Pleasure next Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, you go to our website, backtothebody.org, go to special events, it's on the calendar, but I'll post it for you. Where is that resistance coming from? Where? That you think that there's nothing left, that you're zoomed out, that there's just nothing left for you to know? Um, I would notice that resistance. You know, where is it coming from? How can you create space? How can you meet it? And how could you try something new that honestly, we have never created before? So this is new for us and we've been in this world for some, some of us are for a decade, 15 years or 20 years. And we met our resistance about bringing this work virtually and by doing so found out that we've created a program that it's not just for COVID-19. Mm. That it, this is something that is viable and important and needs to be year round. And we're going to give you a little bite next week. So Ron, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pamela. And I love yeah. that he's already, he's already breathing and opening his heart and his <laughs> chest and getting it together. So thank you everyone for, for joining us. If you have questions um, or more comments to this, because not everybody watches these live. You know, we tape them, we send them out to other people. Please send us your questions. We really care. And we hope we see you next week. Hey, Ron. Hey, it's Pamela. Uh, how was it? Out. How was it for you? <laughs> this was great. Yeah. You met your resistance. I met my resistance. You want to breathe this out? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, so part of the somatic practices and what we do at Back to the Body, we often include breath as being a way to uh, be present in our bodies uh, and a way of grounding. Um, and and when you get into your erotic states, uh, being connected to your breath can increase um, awareness of pleasure in your body. So there's something to work on. And so uh, as we close the call, I'm going to invite you to breathe. Uh, fill your lungs with breath breath and exhale, let out some sound, let out a sigh. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right, we love you all. Uh, uh, I'm going to hit stop. Uh, I, I hit stop. I hit stop. Yes, I want to stop.